All right, let's talk about Evangelicals for Harris. Fascinating group. You may know if you followed politics for a little while that roughly 80% of white evangelicals voted for Donald Trump in 2016 and 2020. And in 2016, I kind of get it why they might be drawn to him. But the fact that even by 2020, he hadn't lost any ground with white evangelicals, because again, roughly 80% voted for him in 2020 as well. But that also means two things. That means, first of all, roughly 20% of white evangelicals backed Hillary Clinton or Joe Biden in those years. And it also means that if Kamala Harris is looking to peel away some voters to her side, if you can make a little dent in that 80% number, you have a lot of room to work with, right? Just bring it down a little bit. It could make a big difference, especially in swing states. Um, and that's mostly because white evangelicals are the most dedicated, reliable voting bloc Republicans have. So if you could pull a little small numbers away from them, that could go a long way. And that's why I was really happy this week to see groups like Evangelicals for Harris get a lot of attention. Now, this group is the creation of a group that's been around for a while called Faith Voters, which is a political action group that they in 2020, they sponsored Evangelicals for Biden, same group. But you may remember a couple of weeks ago, there was like Zoom calls, white women for Kamala, dads for Kamala, everybody, right? They were having these big Zoom calls, raising money, comedians for Kamala. Well, um, it uh, turns out a couple of weeks ago, there was a Christians for Kamala phone call. 40,000 people tuned in. They raised like $200,000 for the campaign. Very impressive. Well, this week, or maybe it was last week, late last week, Evangelicals for Biden held a phone call, which involves a bunch of progressive Christians making a case for why there is nothing hypocritical about being a devout Christian and voting for the Democratic candidate. And it, it's not like that's a really hard argument. It only sounds implausible if you're thinking only along abortion lines or LGBTQ rights. But basically, they were arguing that, look, uh, Kamala Harris is Baptist. Tim Walls is Lutheran. They are pushing for policies that would help Americans who have been struggling with jobs and health care and raising families. Even if they support climate change. You can make the argument that God gave us this planet and we have to protect it. So what could be more Jesus-like than that? And it's very easy for them to make this case to vote for Democrats because look at what's happening on the other side. I've said this so many times, so I'm not going to repeat the whole thing, but Donald Trump doesn't just take the Christian vote for granted. He leans into the worst stereotypes of evangelicals to make the argument that they have no other choice but him. This is the same guy that held the Bible up outside a church after tear gassing peaceful protesters in Washington, D.C. Donald Trump would never be allowed to run a mega church. No Christian church would give him that power. And yet they think he should run the country. Again, this is a openly racist guy who's had multiple wives, had affairs. Um, he a sexual abuser. The two Corinthians dude the guy who's liable for sexual abuse. I mean, he lies about everything. He can't name his favorite Bible verse because he he's never read the Bible. So he's just like, uh, all of it. There are so many reasons Christians should not like this guy. But of course, conservative Christians have flocked to him. Um, and again, if Donald Trump worships anybody, it's himself. The only reason he would people would think he's a person of faith is because Trump says he's a person of faith and they don't know how to detect the lie because they just buy into his pandering. Or the best case scenario I could think of is these Christians just say, you know what? Yeah, he is really bad on everything, but he appoints all the judges we want, and we would rather have the Supreme Court than our integrity. So it's cool. I mean, at least if they believe that, they should say that out loud. I would have a little more respect if they did that. But this also has a negative repercussion for evangelical Christians, because for the next generation or two, white evangelicals are going to be defined by their attachment to Donald Trump. You think white evangelical, you are not going to think Jesus. You're going to think, oh, these are the people that supported the worst person in humanity. You know what I mean? So evangelicals for Harris comes along right now, and they aired their first ad 
And by airing, I mean they posted it online and it went viral. I don't know if they're actually paying for this ad to run in swing states or what. I hope they do. But basically, the ad, which I, I don't have for you right now, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to play it, it showed the Reverend Billy Graham from like 50 or 60 years ago saying that every Christian needed to ask for God's forgiveness, followed by a clip of Trump, uh, followed by a clip of Trump being asked, when has he ever asked for forgiveness? And he says, I don't do that. I never ask for forgiveness. And if the game here is let's highlight Trump's hypocrisy with what evangelicals say we ought to do, well, guess what? They're not going to run out of material anytime soon. Trump is a highlight reel for Christian hypocrisy. And I think here's the power of evangelicals for Harris or any other group like it. What they are doing, I don't think they're going to con uh, convert the mega loyalists to their side. But what they might be able to do is give some Christians permission. Maybe in their heart, they're thinking, I don't want to vote for Donald Trump. But you know, my pastor is telling me I have to vote a certain way. Otherwise, I'm a bad Christian. That babies are going to die if I don't vote for Trump. And what these groups are doing is saying, no, 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 we're giving you permission because we're telling you, you can absolutely be a good Christian and vote for this candidate over that one. Because guess what? You're never going to get anything, everything you want in any political candidate. You're, again, you know who complains about Democrats? Other Democrats. You're not going to get everything you want. But if you have a choice between these two people, Kamala Harris is the more Christian of the two, not just on paper, but like, look at her actions. These are the things we were taught are good, moral, righteous things to do. And one of the interesting supporters of this cause happens to be Billy Graham's granddaughter. Um, and her name, I want to get it right, is Jerusha Duford. Here's what she said to uh, in her, a video that she made for that Zoom call. I was thinking this morning that if you told me 10 years ago that I would be taking an active role in politics, I would have laughed. But then I had to stop and realize this is so much more than politics. In 2016, when a man bragged about assaulting women, various leaders of my faith then propped up this man as a poster boy for godly manhood and leadership. This broke my heart as I have watched, quite frankly, for the last eight years, people who are curious about Jesus and his teachings have done a 180 and walked in the other direction from my faith. Which is a great argument to make, because how many people might have been Jesus curious, but then said, I cannot be part of any religion that thinks Trump is a good guy, and they just lose interest in Christianity. So there are selfish reasons Christians can have for not aligning with Trump. Uh, for what it's worth, the same person, Duford, Billy Graham's granddaughter, she also spoke out in favor of Joe Biden in 2020. So she's not new to all this, but good for her for saying all this stuff. That's really important. I think it's good because evangelicals have been fed this diet of Trump propaganda for years. And a lot of times it comes from their own pastors. They are told constantly they cannot be faithful Christians and vote for Democrats. They got to choose one or the other. And there's only one right answer. And they are told that the Republican Party just ignore all the flaws because you're going to get judges, you're going to get anti-abortion policy and anti-LGBTQ policy and name your social issue. And they just ignore the reality that those policies lead to more suffering. And ironically, in the case of post-Roe abortions, they may have led to more abortions because people are now turning to medicinal abortion or mail, uh, getting pills in the mail. So it's not that evangelicals for Harris support Kamala Harris's positions or the Democratic Party's platform. Uh, in many cases, I'm sure they oppose them, which guess what? Join the club. What sets them apart is that they are refusing to be single issue voters on wedge issues like abortion or LGBTQ rights. They refuse to let Trump destroy the democracy despite what he offers them when it comes to judges. Because these evangelicals for Harris, their idea of being pro-life means caring for people even after they leave the womb, unlike most evangelicals who stop giving a damn after that moment. And they know that the doomsday scenarios that a lot of pastors and right-wing Christians say about like, if Kamala gets elected, then you know the world's going to end, basically. They know that's BS. 
and they want religious liberty for everyone, not just members of their own tribe. And when there are only two viable candidates on the ballot, and one of them is a proven dumpster fire, then anyone who cares about a cause, you, you know that it's perfectly valid to say, I'm going to choose one option over the other. There's only one better decision for me. May not be everything I want, but I'm going to try to push and make the argument in that direction. But one guy's not going to listen to you at all, and he doesn't care about anybody. I also, by the way, really enjoy their Twitter feed uh, because, as you can imagine, they're getting pushback from conservative Christians. And I like this response. Someone said, this has to be a parody account, to which they said, brother, you have to ask yourself, if you see a Christian account that prioritizes kindness and Christ's love and think of it as parody, maybe the discomfort might be inward. Good point. Uh, Franklin Graham, Billy Graham's son, who's just made a whole career living off of daddy's name, he bashed that video they released with Billy Graham talking about forgiveness. Look at this. The liberals are using anything and everything they can to promote candidate Harris. They even developed a political ad trying to use my father's image. How dare they? That is my job. Sorry, he didn't say that. They are trying to mislead people. No, they're not. They literally air quotations. They didn't make up the lines. Maybe they don't know that my father appreciated the conservative values and policies of President Donald Trump in 2016 when he was old and senile at the end of his life. And if he were alive today, my father's views and opinions would not have changed. Listen, anytime someone says if he were alive today, his views would never have changed. You're trashing that person because it's healthy to know someone listens to ideas and then changes their mind. But you know what's interesting? Uh, Billy Graham in 20, uh, when did he say this? In 20, in 1981, when he was well within uh, his younger days, Billy Graham spoke to Parade Magazine. This is from Snopes, by the way, but they quoted this. And Billy Graham was asked about the conservative side. And look at what he said. I don't want to see religious bigotry in any form. Liberals organized in the 60s and conservatives certainly have a right to organize in the 80s. But it would disturb me if there was a wedding between the religious fundamentalists and the political right. The hard right has no interest in religion except to manipulate it. Yeah, I mean, dude got that one dead on right. And until they all decided to uh, just cozy on with the religious right. But good for Billy Graham back in the day. What's also fun about evangelicals for Harris is that conservative Christians right now have no idea how to respond to it. And they're flipping out. Uh, this is from Baptist News Service. But check this out. Denny Burke, the counsel of the the president of the Council for Biblical Manhood and Womanhood and a professor at Southern Baptist Theological Seminary said, the group aims to convince evangelicals of the Christian bona fides of Kamala Harris, but they have to distort Orthodox Christianity to do so. It is, in fact, a betrayal of the gospel. Like, dear God, how dramatic is that? Like, oh, if you like poor people and you want to help them, it's a betrayal of the gospel. This is fun. This is from Jackson Lehmeyer, who is a megachurch pastor, I think, in Oklahoma. He ran for office as well. Facts, evangelicals for, evangelicals for Harris does not represent Orthodox Christianity, but he does. But instead, they represent godless globalism. I don't even know what that means. It just sounds scary, which is the point. But apparently no true Christian supports I'm pretty sure 304 is an inappropriate reference. No true Christian supports Kamala Harris. Literally pulling out the no true Scotsman card right there. Uh, this is a fun one from, this is quoted by Right Wing Watch, but it's Charlie Kirk and his pastor guest. They are not fans of evangelicals for Harris. This is an oxymoron. It's Jews for Hitler. This is really what we're talking about here. Like, yeah, they went there. They're just evangelicals for Harris. They're, I don't know if it's, honestly, if you have right-wing people saying it's Jews for Hitler, that could be a compliment at this point. I'm not sure anymore. This is from Sean Foyt, who is the COVID super spreader musician dude. 
the fact that there's even such a thing as evangelicals for Harris, that pastors and influencers join, shows you just how apostate much of the American church has become. Yeah, they're so bad now because they decided not to worship Donald Trump. And then there's this pastor online. So evangelicals for Harris are essentially Nazi regime theologians. Checks out. Again, coming from this dude, maybe that's a compliment. I'm not sure. But I love that evangelicals for Harris is just getting under all these people's skin. It's great. More of that. We need more of that. Um, again, I, I don't think I'm going to make the argument that evangelicals for Harris will make or break the race. I don't think any one single demographic will. But again, if you could peel off a few evangelicals from swing states and make them either not vote for either candidate because whatever reason they want to tell themselves or convince them to vote for Harris, that goes a long way. It could make a difference. Donald Trump knows that. He knows, in general, the black vote in America is overwhelmingly Democrat. So he's tried, I mean, really poorly, but he's tried to get black voters on his side in the worst way, saying like, well, I'm a convicted felon. Black people will love me. I'm paraphrasing. But like he's said that and it's a horrible way to try to get black voters. But I think he knows if I'm trying to get a handful of voters, let me start with the side. Let me start with a group that is overwhelmingly on the other side because it might be easier to peel away some of them. So good for them. I'm not saying I agree with the evangelicals for Harris on a lot of issues, but that's fine. Their reasoning doesn't have to align with my own. I wish them the best of luck. Uh, what other questions do we have here? Just looking through. Yeah, uh, thanks for pointing this out, Rochester Swift. Frank Schaefer is a good source on how the evangelicals got in bed with reactionary businessmen in the GOP. Yeah, Schaefer's said and written some really wonderful things. If you look online on YouTube for uh, Frank Schaefer, you will find some awesome hits of him on cable news four years ago, more than now, talking about that problem. Robin says, to be quite honest, they don't sound like evangelicals. Is it a secret deconstructing account? No, here's the thing. By the way, Evangelicals for Harris also had a table at the DNC. That was the only other real big religious group I saw. But like, Here's the thing. They don't sound like evangelicals. And that's one of the reasons they exist, because their argument is, why do evangelicals sound like Republican operatives? Right. We're not used to hearing evangelicals who say, let's actually help the poor. Let's make sure people are free. Let's do what Jesus might have wanted. You're not used. No one's used to hearing Christians in America talk like that. And that pisses them off more than anybody else. And so they're trying to change the argument about, I mean, what does it mean to sound like an evangelical? Their faith has been hijacked from them by extremists, many of whom go to their same churches. So, yeah, it doesn't sound like evangelicals because we're not used to it, which is, you know, good for them for trying to reclaim their own label. I, I don't know if it'll work, but we can always hope that it, they get some success. <laughs> 